Okay. All right, welcome everyone again to another week we, where we can learn a uh, script smart contract uh, programming together. So in this in this uh, week, I'm going to talk about something. You know, is uh, you can think about it as like an advanced topic. So we are going to cover so called uh, sick hash flags. You know, this uh, quite a mouthful. Uh, let's try to let's get it. Uh, you know, break it up into several steps so people can understand it fully. Okay, so before I even dive into that, I think is uh, the most closely related concept here is called script context. Okay, so for people here in this audience, okay, who can tell me a little bit about what is a script context in the, you know, in the, in our script smart contract? What does it mean? Anyone? Is it the uh, context of the transaction itself and the the spent outputs that are the inputs yes. of the new transaction and the new? Yes, pretty much. So, yeah, on the highest level, you can think of you know when the S script contract, right? I mean, in, or you can think about even Bitcoin script when it runs, it runs in some kind of environment, right? Because uh, usually you only you know, so-called the smart contract only knows the uh, so-called the uh, public function arguments, but it knows something even more information than that. So it runs in a so-called context, you know, that's why the name, the script runs in a certain context. And what this context consists of, uh, yeah, roughly as you, you just mentioned, is about the the transaction that's spending the, the, the smart contract uh, output and the smart contract output itself. Okay, so it's that's like uh, the rough picture, but why I say it's rough picture because that's what this uh, you know sick sick hash flag is come about. So you know if you look at the you know what this part is about you know is on the highest level what you just said is exactly right. So basically it has a UTXO that that contains a smart contract, for example, right? You have oh what is a smart contract code. And what is the Satoshi value locked in the UTXO? And the rest you can think about is uh, is uh, all the meta information about the spending transaction, which is consuming the smart contract output. Okay. So I, that's why I say is roughly right. Is a uh, you know that's a you know that's a catch here, and that's what we are going to cover today. Okay. It's called uh, you know C hash flags. So how many of you heard about this term before? Anyone? Sick as all, sick as you raise a hand. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I don't know how to, you just, okay. oh, okay. I saw you raise it. Okay, so great. So at least we have some, uh, so can you give a quick summary of what uh, your understanding of this sick hash flags are? Yeah, uh, to my best ability. Um, yeah, sure. The the flag uh, is a a number that in, is encoding the way in which the sig which parts of the transaction uh, needs to be hashed and signed by the signature data. Exactly. Or signed correct. by the signature. Yes. Yes. Correct. Why not? Um, specifically, when you see all non single etc. Those are I believe um, in the, this this uh, diagram here, the left side is the inputs that are included, are meant to be included in the hash, and the right side are the outputs that are meant to be included in the hash. And I think the blue means signed and white means unsigned. Does it not need to be included? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Probably best so, to reiterate what said. <laughs> I did. Yeah, that's why I think that's a very precise definition. And, uh, you know, we, even before we get into that kind of detail, I, I just want to start, you know, just say, why do we even want to have this kind of a uh, sick hash flags? Because, you know, so when we say, you know, Bitcoin signature, right? When you sign something, you have to define what exactly you are signing, right? So normally, that's why I'm saying as before, 
you know, script context, you know, that's another term about sick hash preimage. So actually these two terms is, uh, is the same. So this, this two, a okay, sick hash preimage, right? So sick hash preimage, what does that mean? So when you using some kind of digital signature, you are trying to sign something, right? And when you sign some kind of message uh, using your private key, okay? So when you sign the message, I think most of the time when you, when you want to, you don't sign the original message, instead, actually you, are, you hash it first and then you sign it, okay? In cryptography. So what the sick hash preimage in the Bitcoin space means, go ahead. Um, you have a question? Can you quickly explain? Yeah, I have a question. Can you quickly explain the reason why we hash uh, be the message before signing instead of just signing the entire message without hashing? Uh, I think of, uh, there may be more than one reason, but the number one reason is uh, for efficiency because it's uh, still some kind of computation, right? So let's say the message is like one gigabyte, right? You don't want to run this, uh, you know, signature algorithm, you know, signing algorithm over the one gigabyte. Instead, you can just hash it, then you get 32 bytes. But then essentially, unless you have a collision, right? So you essentially are signing the big message. So, but then you don't have to run it over one gigabyte or one terabyte. You only have to run it on, let's say 32 bytes. Does this make sense? Yeah. Because it's a computation. Yeah, you still, you want to save, right? You, and you want to be, doesn't depend on the message size, uh, how complex. Yes, I think that's the num primary reason. Maybe there's some other reasons which are, uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. But suffice it uh, for our purpose, basically, that's why you call the sick hash premium. You are signing the hash, right? So that's why it's, you know, you're signing the, the, the pre image, you know, the hash pre image, right? So that's why it's called the, the sick hash pre image. Pre image basically is meaning what the original message, okay? So sick hash pre image basically the, the message that's being signed by the Bitcoin sig signature, okay? So if you look at the fields, you know, this is exactly, this is the, the definition. So you look at this, it's exactly the same the, with the script context. So script context, you know, because in our purpose, in smart contract, I, we rename it, it's, you can think about it as anus, okay? So this is also another way to look at it. So you cover most part of the transaction, but sometimes, you know, you want to find a control, right? By default, it's using all, as, I, as the, the diagrams here shows, you know, this is a transaction. So on the left, you have inputs, you have outputs, right? Here, we are only using two, Inputs to output, remember you can have arbitrary number, right? So by default, if you're not doing anything, you are using, we are using sig hash all. That means, you know, when you sign the sig, when you sign it, all the inputs and all the outputs are covered. Okay, that, and uh, uh, the implication is that the sig hash preimage, AKA the script context has, contains all the information, inputs and outputs. Okay, makes sense so far. Any other questions? Yeah, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. Oh, thank you. Okay, great. So, you know, that's by the, that's a default, right? So, which is the mostly commonly used, right? Most of the time, you use a default. But there are a lot of applications because yeah, you want to have final control. Which part of a uh, transactions you want to cover? Which part of the transaction you want not cover? Okay, so. In Bitcoin, actually, you have three ways. You know, uh, th let's say no, actually six ways. So you have, you know, for the outputs, you can have three. You can have three ways, three flags, right? So all means all the outputs assigned and included in the sig hash preimage and AKA script context. Okay, or you can say none of it. Or another one, you can say single. Okay, this one has to, I have to explain a little bit. So basically, when you are, whenever you are signing, right, the signature is one in one of the inputs, right. So then you map that, map it to the same, you know, output at the same position. Okay, for example, if the signature here, 
when we are talking about this one, this input, the single when it's the when it's signed the single, that means I only cover input one. Okay, but if it's, if I'm talking about signature in the second input, then the cover output is at uh, index two. Make sense? Single. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there more than one uh, output that could be uh, needed to include like a double or anything like that, or is that not defined by the protocol? Oh, single is just one by the name, right? It's just uh, you cover right. only one. One. Is there uh, is there a double or is there a, any no. caches for multiple? No, all. Right? That means all. You cover all, but you can only cover. You know, only three options by default, right? You have the noun, main cover zero, and single cover the output at the same index uh, versus the input and everything. So you don't have, uh, I think at least default, you don't have, you can say, hey, what if I have uh, three outputs? I want to cover the first and second, but not the third. Uh, that's not mm -hmm. doable. I mean, by default. Make sense? Is there a way to do that? Uh, or oh, no? yeah, that's like, I mean, we are talking about advanced. So if you really at the end, I'm going to cover another advanced advanced. Yes, you can do anything you want. And that's also mm -hmm. closely related to the elliptic curve last, uh, elliptic curve of cryptography we talked about uh, in the last two sessions. Yes, that's also doable. I'm going to show you. Okay. Okay. But let's talk about that at the end because uh, we probably want to cover the basic first and then go to the more advanced topic. But yeah, that's a great question. Okay, so we just talk about the three basic ways, you know, which you can control the outputs. But let's also talk about what about the inputs. Okay, so the inputs, that's another additional flag called anyone can pay. I'm going to cover why it's called this, but for, for now, just bear with me. So when you say, when you have a uh, input, you say anyone can pay. What does this mean? It means, you know, uh, the signature. And also the script content only cover the input the uh, you are you are signing. Okay, anything else is uh, you don't control it. So basically, anybody else they can change other inputs, but not your inputs. No. Okay, and then this additional flag can be usually you cannot be used alone. So you can think about this also like a, a combination flag so it can be combined with any of the three flags above okay but you cannot be used alone so in total that give you six possibilities for the default six flash hack right so here let's say when anyone can pay with cover with all that means you know anyone all still means that all the inputs are covered anyone can pay meaning oh i only cover my input you know anyone else's input i don't care they can do whatever with other inputs. So, you know, you can see the inputs are the same, right? If you're not using this Ccash, uh, anyone can pay, all the inputs are covered. So you cannot mutate them like if once is signed, right? So versus here, you can do anything other than the signature the input is in, any other inputs can be mutated and the signature will still be valid. Okay, so now another way I just talk about this from the signature point of view, but from script context, that means when when uh, you know all the colored parts, they are part of the script context. Anything that's left as blank, they're not covered. So you cannot access that you know smart contract. That's an implication. Okay. Okay, let's go to some examples to to get a better understanding. Let us first one. Let's look at the anyone can pay. Okay, let's let look at the very, you know, this is a very uh, uh, classic example. You know, is probably proposed more than ten years ago called uh, crowdfunding, uh, or some some. I think it's maybe at least Mike Hearn proposed this project called Lighthouse. So basically, what if you have some public goods project like a lighthouse, right? You know, you want to fund right using Bitcoin. How would that work, right? So usually, when we talk about uh, 
a Bitcoin transaction, you know, let's say standard meaning here, most more, more or less meaning uh, you use the default uh, Signash flag, which is Signash all. So if you use all, that means, hey, you got, uh, you signed all the inputs and all, all the outputs, uh, all the inputs most likely coming from the same same owner because he has the same key, private key that controls all the, that can redeem all the inputs. Right? He signed and then give it to the next recipient. Okay, so this is the standard transaction using all. But what if, uh, you know, I want to a transaction, but the input is coming from different owner, right? That's where, where anyone can pay. I think that's also where the name come from, right? Let's say, you know, you have a village, right? They want to find a you know, lighthouse. You know, you know, nobody wants to find it by, just by himself, right? So they say, hey, let's launch this crowdfunding project. If we can, if we can raise, let's say, 100 Bitcoin, we're going to build this lighthouse. But if not, it cannot be raised, then everybody gets refunded and uh, this project is no, it's a no go, okay? So then what, how do you do it in Bitcoin? So the, it's also very simple by using anyone can pay. So for here, let's say Alice. Let Alice can sign a transaction, has her own input, and has one output that pays to, let's say some, uh, let's say some escrows address and with the amount, say, you know, 100 Bitcoin, right? And then she can sign it with her own input. But then instead of uh, with all, with Ccash all, she can sign it with Ccash anyone can pay, and all, okay? That means, okay, anyone can tell me if, uh, let's say Alice contribute one Bitcoin, and then she signs with all plus anyone can pay. So she now gets this transaction. And the output pays to the escrow. That's a setup for, let's say, the Lighthouse project with 100 Bitcoin in, in the amount. So now she has a transaction, right? Can anyone tell me, is this a valid Bitcoin transaction? Meaning, can she just, can, meaning, can, mm -hmm. he, can she just broadcast it? No, she wouldn't be able to because the input uh, value and is not equal to the output value. So it would, uh, she, she would need more um, inputs to val make it uh, to match the output value of 100 Bitcoin if she only put in one. <clears throat> yes, exactly. So, so I wouldn't because, say you know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, exactly right. So it's like a, it's a the so-called uh, partial transaction. It's uh, not, it's not a valid Bitcoin transaction because what you just said, the input amount is less than the output amount. Okay, so if she, somebody, anybody who's decided to broadcast it, it will be rejected. Okay, so how do we make it a valid transaction? The only way to make it valid, a valid Bitcoin transaction is for other people. Oh, sorry, to contribute to it, right? Let's say Bob or even Charlie, you know, Bob, let's say, you know, he's very rich. He put, let's say, 98. Okay. This is 10. No, sorry. This is 10. Maybe he put, uh, Bob puts, let's say, 80. And then Charlie puts another. After, even after Bob put, uh, let's say, 80, it's still, uh, for the same reason, it's still not valid, right? Because, you know, 10 plus. 80 is still 90 less than one your target, okay? So, you know, so the way this works is Alice, after she signs her own input, she give the partial transaction to Bob, and then Bob can sign it, right? With, uh, then this transaction has now has two inputs. The great thing about anyone can pay is, even after Bob adds this input to the transaction, the original signature is still valid, right? You can see because anyone can pay. Otherwise, if she does not use anyone can pay, after Bob signs it, the original message, the original signature is going to become invalid, right? Because the message changed. Does this make sense? I think this is the key, key point, the difference between whether you use anyone can pay or not. If you don't use it, 
if Bob adds here her his own input, then the transaction, the original Alice signature will become invalid. Okay. Could could you so, repeat in summary what you mean by that? So here's saying right. Let's say why do we need that anyone can pay here? Alice signs and then has this uh, one input and one output partial transaction. She give it to Bob. And then Bob adds his inputs, right? So now it has two inputs and one output. Okay, the input now changes. If if uh, Alice doesn't use anyone can pay when she signs, this transaction now becomes invalid. I mean, signature wise, because this, oh, yeah, the message yeah, changed, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why she has to use anyone can pay. Same for Bob. That's also the name come from. So basically, you know, we want to raise up to, you know, for at least 100 Bitcoin. So I contribute 10. So anyone else can pay the rest, you know, doesn't matter how many inputs they can add. I don't care. Okay. And I cannot control. All right. So Bob as something still failed and then go ahead. You have a question? Okay, uh, if not, I uh, keep going. So let's say Charlie as her, as a third input, she also give, he also give 10. So together this is 100, and then you can reach the, the crowdfunding target 100. So, you know, in together, you have three inputs, but uh, I mean, of course, because it is anyone can pay, you can add, add as many inputs as you want. So as long as the amount is bigger or equal to 100, then, this transaction is, in, is valid. And the last one who signed can just broadcast it and this crowdfunding will be successful. And so if nobody, if the total amount is less, then this transaction is invalid, right? So anybody, you know, the original UTXO cannot be spent. So uh, pretty much they take the, the refund, right? So that's either or. So the good thing is, you know, even the escrow right, cannot take the, if it doesn't, has not reached the target, the escrow cannot run with the existing donations. Okay. Another question about the crowdfunding using anyone can pay. How does the refund um, happen? Oh, it doesn't happen explicitly. Basically, let's say you only, let's say 100, this is 1080, and then nobody else can treat afterwards. And then because this UTXO cannot be spent, right? So basically it's, it, it, you can almost think it's like a promise, but it's, it cannot be realized, right? So it doesn't have to, Alice doesn't have to explicitly uh, send another transaction to take the refund. She, because she, her original UTXO is still intact. So that means it's not uh, spent. So that in that way is, uh, it, it is, it is a refund, okay. But she doesn't have to do, actually do anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Let's uh, talk about another flag. Okay. Let's say single. Okay. So for people who have just a brief, brief reminder, let's say, you know, you know, quite some time ago, we talk about the state for contract, right? So basically the idea is, you know, you can have a chain of transactions and the state, the transition is controlled by like, like a state machine. So you have the rules, the smart contract control, you know, the state transaction rules. Okay. So by, you know, this is the simplest, it's one of the simplest example we, we cover, it's called a counter. So it's also very easy. You know, basically when you first deploy it, uh, it has a counter, let's say zero. And then every time you call the contract, you up, you increment this count by one. Okay. So if you look at the latest, you know, you follow chain of transactions, the latest one, you can by looking at that number, look at the count, you can know how many times this contract has been called. Okay. But so it's maintaining this internal count, how many times it's been called. Okay. So this is a simple example of a state, how do you maintain state? So in this way, 
so I'm here, I use an example, you can see, okay, so for public function, any public function, you have a decorator method, it, the method can take a input actually. So before we always assume it just by the default, right? So actually default is a C cache all. So if we here, you can see the example, you know, it's using a combination of single and anyone can pay. Can anyone guess uh, why do we use this uh, Ccash flag in the counter example? Anyone based on the, the concept we have talked about before? Anyone has a guess? Let's say why does it use, uh, for example, single? Okay. Or anyone? I'm not sure. Uh, anyone can pay. Anyone have a guess? Okay. For here's the rest. Okay. Okay. Yusuf, go ahead. So, in my understanding, uh, since the contract is going to be called and it is going to maintain the state, so by using anyone can pay the state will maintain and whenever the last person called it it will make that uh, the earlier transaction by it and it will update, update the state and give him the latest count okay that's one possibility okay so actually that's another possibility also i think yeah that's one reason so basically you just talk about it you just mentioned it exactly uh, it's uh, one of the big reasons because this contract, right? So remember, for a lot of other contracts, let's say pay to a public hash, you send to some address. Uh, for the UTXO and for that contract, usually only one person can call it, right? Because you need the public key, uh, you need the private corresponding private key. But in this case, right, this counter, because there's no such, let's say, uh, access control, right? Anyone can call this as long as you. Uh, he can pay the transaction fee, right? Because, you know, I don't care, you know, who, who is going to, let's know, let's know, say, Alice's public key or Bob's public key here. There's no uh, signature required here in, when you call this, okay? So that means, uh, a lot of time this means you have to, the person and, okay, so here's the missing part. So anyone can explain what this part of the code means? Anyone? If I've, uh, you have written any part of, uh, let's say, state for contract, you probably know. Okay, Yosef, go ahead. Uh, we this have one. another yeah, what? Uh, internal uh, So it is a public method in criminal on chain and inside it we have another internal method with the function of that internal method is the increment the counter and is there at the bottom this dot count plus plus so after that the amount is of type uh, utxo amount is, is of type big int and using the script context we can get the amount of the utxo and we put it in the amount and uh, we build the state the state output we update the state by making sure that the utxo value didn't change and yes uh, exactly <clears throat> we make sure that the output the, is the same the script context output and the transaction output the output expected by the transaction and the output expected by the contract is the same then it will update the state without changing changing the etxo value and we have another instance of that contract yeah fantastic yes basically uh, what uh Yosef just explained. So in this contract, you can think of the contract when it first uh, get deployed, it lock has some, let's say, Bitcoins. So the uh, this part means, pretty much that means the contract's balance cannot change whenever you call it, right? For example, you don't want somebody to steal, basically to take uh, Bitcoin out of this contract. So, okay. So let's say first it has uh, one Bitcoin each. So when, when you call it again, you still to make sure it's still the balance doesn't decrease, doesn't change. So that means nobody can take money out of it. Okay. 
So that means you know that's a practical problem then. So if you have one, let's say put one surcharge, how are you going to pay the fee? Okay. So that's where the anyone can pay come into play, right? Because you need to add additional inputs, okay, to cover the transaction fee. Make sense now? Because you are not allowed to cover the fee by the transaction balance. The balance has to stay the same. So you have to have additional inputs, right? So that's why, you know, it has to be anyone can pay. So anybody who wants to call this, they can add their own inputs and no problem. Okay. They can add any, as many as they want. It can be Y, it can be 1000, doesn't matter. But there has to be more than one. No, no, uh, at least one. So that's why anyone can pay is here. Make sense so far? And then after we talk about anyone can pay, anyone can, uh, can anyone tell me why single is combined here? Well, I just talked about what anyone can pay is to cover the fees. Okay, once you have transaction fee paying inputs, Usually you have some output, right? What the out, you have some additional outputs, right? What is that, that output? Anyone have a guess? Anyone can pay it, single means that there's only one output that has been signed. Uh, uh, not really. Uh, you mean combined with single or no? Yeah, combined with single. It means only oh, one yes. output. Okay. Yeah. But what if what's the problem if I use all here? Is that a problem? Okay, I'm going to explain. Okay. For this contract? So here. Really? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I use all, is that a problem? It would Okay, here's a go ahead. I don't see why there would be a problem because um, you would the the contract would still have a single output. I'm assuming, even unless mm -hmm. this contract has uh, the ability to add multiple outputs. So here's the thing, right? Based on the this code here, this is build another output, right? But if you look at the script context code. This can limit when you call this contract. If you use all, that means you can only have one output, right? Because here, there's no other output, right? You just you are just building one output, and then the with the same amount. Oh, so basically, okay. this is a contract contract oh, output. Right? This is a contract output. What if you have other outputs? So usually, so what kind of output you call, want? So no other contract. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Sorry. Uh, so increment on chain, that function couldn't be called in other functions because uh, it, it would be, that other function might be creating a, another output. And so yes. this and, on, uh, I... increment on chain. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah uh, that's about right. Basically, because I covered, you know, because the balance cannot change, you have to use other inputs to cover the fee. But whenever you, we know UTXO models, right? Whenever we use inputs, it's like you go to like a grocery store or, you know, 7-Eleven or something. You give, you want to buy, let's say, a gum. And you give the guy 10 bucks. But usually it happens, right? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not the exact amount you are paying. Usually you have to get a change, right? Which is the change output. So most likely, uh, you are not using exact exact amount, right? When you pay in the fee, so that's why you have to get a usually usually you have to have a change output, right? So if you do, if you use all, you cannot have a change, right? Because this kind of limits. Oh, you can only have one output, right? You cannot get a change back. So basically, your full input is going to go into the miners as a fee. So which uh unless you are special cases you have an exact change output yeah for a lot of time you want to have another output that that give you give you back the change right so if you use all you cannot do that right but if you use single as we talked about before right if it's single that means 
you know, this is the contract uh, you are calling, right? Basically, you are here, right? So because you are al already using anyone can pay, so the contract you are spending from here, it goes to another uh, output. But at the same time, you only care about this, right? You don't care about other, um, so somebody else can add an input because uh, anyone can pay and he can, he can also add a, a change output. So in this case, the, the contracts to call will still be successful versus you use all, this one will not work. If we add a change, is it clear now? Why we yeah. need this both? Okay. Yeah, I think this is not true. So I want to make sure everybody is on the page, same page. All good? So yeah, this is a very common use case for if you use any kind of like, uh, let's say state for contract, right? So a lot of times you only have one state output, you know, it's a chain of transactions. It's uh, only the, the contracts, the state is only in uh, one of the outputs, many outputs, right? So in a lot of cases in this, you, you can use a single. So output, other outputs, they can, you can, you don't care, right? Because you want to make sure as long as this state is, it's maintained, I'm good. And uh, anyone can pay a lot of money to cover the fees, okay. Clear now, this one? Okay, I assume it's a yes, okay. So we covered, uh, you know, by default is all, and we also covered, you know, anyone can pay and also cover single. All right, let's, last example I want to give is, uh, you know, we haven't used it so far, it's now, okay. So now, what does this mean? If you look at the picture, right, again, you know, it, it's a little bit of a weird because you are not sending none of the outputs, right? <laughs> so that means you are pretty much giving out a, a, a blank check, right? That's the equivalent, right? You think about a check here, or that means, hey, I give you this uh, check, I have all the information filled, filled right? Uh, how much was the recipient information assigned, okay? And this now it's like you pretty much giving out a blank check, right? So giving you, I sign this, but I don't, you know, specify the recipient nor the amount, right? Oh, sorry, the, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't uh, sign. I sign, but I don't specify where the money goes and how much, right? So that's what is the in this analogy means. But why would I? do that, it's, isn't that dangerous, right? Because it's like, uh, you just have this, you dropped your checkbook on the street with your signature there. Now anyone can steal your money, right? So a lot of time you don't, you're doing, that's very dangerous, but in some cases you want to use that as well. Okay, just give one example here. So let's say, you know, Alice, let's say this is a parent, right? Parent, uh, mom, let's say Alice, and that's the son Bob, right? And Alice wants to give Bob some allowance. Okay, so he can go to school and buy some, I don't know, lollipop or whatever, or books, okay? So we call it delegation. Alice has some Bitcoins, but she wants to delegate the spending privilege to Bob. How would she do that? Okay, so she uh, created a transaction which has the which has one input and this one input goes to spend her UTXO here, but then she signs with now. Okay. So that's the in, first input. That's another input is uh is go to some UTXO belongs to Bob. Okay. So she signs the input when she Alice used the Ccash now here. That means all the inputs are covered, right? But now the output is covered. That means when she when Bob signs this transaction, the up, output can be any, but anything, right? That means Bob effect, effectively takes control of the money here because he can spend it to anybody he wants, right? Pay some, I don't know, uh, let's say vendors for a lollipop or pay the bookstore for some, you know, textbooks, right? He has a control. So effectu effectively, Alice has delegated the money here to Bob, 
Bob can spend whatever whatever way he wishes. Okay. Any question here now? This is just one use case of uh, now. Is this clear or not? Anyone? Yes, it's clear. Or anyone can try to. Okay, great. Okay, let, let me ask you a clarifying question if uh, you think it's clear. So what, when Bob signs, what kind of a uh, hash flag is he's going to use here? So as this you said it. before, uh, Ali sent some Bitcoin to Bob. So by using the tick hash on, that means he didn't put any constraint on the output. So Bob can use the money to do whatever he like. Yes. Is so what, I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So let me clarify the question. So you you have two signatures, right? Why is Alice's signature? Because that's her uh, UTXO. So she signs using Sikash now. Uh, when Bob also have to sign, right? This is Bob original UTXO. So when Bob signs, what kind of a Sikash flag he's going to use here? So you have two inputs, right? The first one is now. What about here? Yeah. That's what what the Sikash flag Bob is going to use. That's the question. He used all, right? Yeah, most likely, right? Oh, uh, I I think he doesn't have to use anyone can bear because he can just use all because for him this is just a normal plan. He wants to cover everything, right? Because he doesn't want anybody else to mm -hmm. contribute far. Oh, and he wants to make okay. sure nobody can change the output, right? So most likely okay, he's that, going to use all. That means Bob yeah. will use the uh, Bob will use the default uh Sikash plug. Oh yes, exactly. Yes, yes, correct. That's why it's not uh, okay. shown here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, great, great. Uh yeah, you seem to be a <laughs> crowd expert. Good. Keep it up. Okay. All right, any other question? If not, uh, let's wrap, let's uh, call it a day. Yeah, great. Any final thoughts regarding, you know, let's say Seacash flags or anything else we're not covered today? I hope this is useful. I think it is a little bit advanced. Oh, by the way, uh, before I go, I think I just, I promised that I will show you the, you know, the, the fanciest one, which is called, uh, uh, say can simulate arbitrary sig hash flags, you know, as script. So can, can you guys see my uh, browser or you're still seeing the slides? Yes, we can see your browser. Okay, browse. okay, fantastic. I think uh, earlier on, Sam, I promise you I will go to your question here. So we covered, you know, three default ones, right? Uh, four actually, all now, you know, uh, single plus the company, they can, can be combined with anyone can pay. But as you said, right, what if I want to cover, let's say I have three apples, I want to only want to cover the first two, or I want to cover the first one and the third one, but not the second one. By default, right, if you only use the default ones, you cannot do that, okay, in the Bitcoin protocol. But thanks to the way we we have smart contract, right? So the way we do it is, uh, you know, we can first using all, you know, when you use all, right, you, you pretty much get the, the full thing right here, where you use all, you get all the inputs and outputs. And then because Remember, well, we have the elip curve library, right? So we can designate the signature to cover. We can run the signing algorithm ourselves, right? We can say, hey, when we sign, we can choose the you know, first input with, and the second output. So actually you can, you can simulate it. Yeah, because we have, the, we have smart contract, you can, and the smart contract can do uh, any kind of a, can sign any kind of message, right? The message being, 
you know, once we have all, so we have, this algorithm have two, two steps. The step one, using all to get the actual, you know, script content. And then in the second part, we sign it. We sign it. Because uh, we have a digital signature algorithm implemented in, in S script. So we can say which part the, the pre image is going to be. We can say, oh, the first symbol and second upper. So with this, you can sign any kind of uh, inputs and outputs or any other field in the script context you, by using you use S script contract. You don't use the default CCAT flags. Is this clear? I, I mean, probably not. Any questions? I'm having uh, trouble getting clear on what you mean by using a leveraging the signature, the elliptic curve signature, is that, does that mean that you're, are you talking about uh, like multi-sig or, or, or something like no, that? No, no. So let's, let's get back to, okay, let's get back to the slides. Okay. Uh, maybe so maybe slides, if yeah. you gave a, a, a clear example of how uh -huh. you would do, you would like say, um, instead of single, you do mm -hmm. like, uh, two of three outputs need to be signed. Mm -hmm. How would you do? Okay. How would you go about constructing yeah. transaction? Yeah. Let's go go through an example. So remember earlier, right? We talked about. I mean, before we talk about elliptic curves, and that's why algorithm we implemented the first one actually. It, uh, we implemented the signature verification algorithm. Okay, right? Because it's just a bunch of uh, you know point addition and uh, scalar multiplication, okay? So the key difference here is this M, this message signed. This message can be arbitrary. So if you don't use this uh, uh, smart contract based uh, signature verification, the message can only be the CCAT pre-image. You guys with me so far? It cannot be arbitrary. Let's yeah. say you cannot sign weather data. The signature cannot cover weather data. Okay. Mm -hmm. So by using this uh, smart contract based uh, ECDSA verification, this message can be anything. So in this case, the message can be just, you know, because the message can be arbitrary and the message can be, oh, cover first input, second output, or uh, first output, and uh, third output. So this is a message, you concatenate them. So, so it has two steps. First, you're using all to you get the, the full pre-image. And then this is the, all the fields, right? So once, then once you have this, you can, choose and, you can pick and choose which part you want to put in, in a message to be signed with another signature. Does this make sense? Hmm. Because this is everything is just a message, so, right? By default, this message can so only you, have you, you know be this, this, or this only uh, six possibilities. But then using the customized signature algorithm, the message can be arbitrary, so it can be arbitrary. It can be this, this, and this, but not this, which is not possible. But if you only use a default six hash flags, go ahead. Hmm. So does that, are, are you saying that you, you construct a, let's say you wanted to do <clears throat> taking single again, as the, the example, you want to extend that to say, we call it a double, which is yeah, two uh -huh. of the outputs and say there's, there's a total of three, um, then, or there could be three or more, then yeah, what you would sure. do is yeah. do a single on part that you would start with sig hash single and sign that and then add the second output and then sign that is that what i'm understanding is do two signatures Can uh, you, start, you are like... actually first step you use it all to get all the information right because that's the only way okay so you okay. use all first once you have uh -huh. all right then you can say any arbitrary combination you can say oh i want to have the second input and the first two outputs but not the first inputs. And 
the third output, right? So you concatenate all this together uh, to be the message that's the, the, the I just showed earlier, right? To be signed. This because this can be arbitrary message. This message. Oh, so you're not talking about the image. I mean, sorry, you're not talking yeah. about the hash. Or uh, you need the, the yeah. Hash this is itself. a hash per image. Yeah, this is a hash per image mm -hmm. because you're going to hash here first. So basically, what you do in this your example, you will uh, you will concatenate all the inputs, the first output and second output, but not the third output. So you put this as a message, mm -hmm. and this signature mm -hmm. check you get the signature that's going to cover this the. Uh, Everything before the third, uh, the second input, but not everything else is excluded after that. So this is going to the message you sign. Uh -huh. So the the only way it's going to be but valid it, so is it, if I understand correctly, you're saying that the message that you're signing is the all the inputs and let's say two outputs and potentially there could potentially be a third or more outputs to to even up but you're not covering the, the yeah, but they are not part of the signature you're not covering the third one right yes but yes. then if you're if you're using big hash all flag wouldn't that mean what you're signing is invalid because the requirement here is that the signature needs to cover the extra output that is missing the third or so one? So here you can think about, you can think of your two signatures here. Okay, one is the first one you use all. The second, mm -hmm. you have a second signature, which is using this kind of, like a, you can call it double. That's the that's flag, you just customize it. The first one is mm -hmm. just to get all the, the premium, all the premium part. So you can, you can sign it here, right? Because mm -hmm. otherwise if you don't have all. So, yeah, the simplest way to answer your question, you have two signatures, okay? Mm -hmm. Because sig hash flag is associated with each individual signature, right? So you have first signature, you have all, and the second one is you can call it double. Right? This double is customized, and that's only possible because you can program it in a higher level smart contract. You can, otherwise, you have to change the protocol to support, let's say, double. In this way, you can mm -hmm. support a double or triple or whatever combinations you want to have. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I, I vaguely understand. I think I'll have to kind of mm -hmm. read that article and sit on it a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. yeah, if you have more questions, mean, yeah, but... just ask. Yeah, ask in the Slack and or, or Discord. We answer it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. All right, that's all. I think uh, uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys and uh, people who watch it later. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for coming and hopefully see you all next week. Okay, bye bye. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye.